All right, here we go. State of 11 D. Um, I prepared a few slides that we're going to go through about kind of what's going on in 11 D right now. Um, a lot about the new 11 D Edge feature that just came out this week and kind of where it fits in the 11 D ecosystem of plugins and tools that you can use. So um, I just kind of wanted to use this opportunity to give some real some more clarity around how to use 11 uh, for some of these more dynamic uh, and large site use cases moving forward. Oh, yep. All right. Yep. We don't need that. So, uh, so uh, in 2017, that was the or origin of Ali. It really started as a static site, gen site generator. It is a static site generator. Uh, um, really, the build part of uh, uh, was the main focus. And uh, 11D is a tool to generate static files. That's kind of the whole point of the, of 11D to begin with. Um, and then sort of last year, it changed a little bit. We added a, nope, uh, incorrect order of animations, but we added serverless, serverless plugin last year. Um, so it serverless, the serverless plugin allowed you to run 11D sort of uh, in a AWS Lambda or in a Netlify function to generate content on request. Um, and then this year is sort of the third iteration or the third epoch of 11D's life. Um, we added, just this week, we added the new Edge plugin. It's kind of a, a real big deal. And I'm, I'm going to kind of through why it's a big deal and what, on what it on moving forward. I mentioned build is kind of the core of 11D. It's our roots. It's where we started. It's where we're going to focus moving forward. And the additional plugins that we've added to supplement the build are really add-ons. They're layers on top of the build layer. Everything starts with the build. The build is the core focus. Um, and really the static files part of 11D is really the main, it's really going to continue to be the main point of 11D. Uh, moving forward. And the reason for that is, I, I probably don't have to convince you you all, but static files are awesome. Uh, they're super fast to load in the browser. Um, you don't have to generate anything on request, like I said. Um, they're really the most portable because you, you can just take output folder and dump it on a host, host any host that you want to put it onto. Um, and static files make it really easy to make, easy to make your symbol between hosts. And, and they're simplest to host. So uh, in effect, that means that they're the cheapest, not just for the hosting provider, but also for uh, the person that wants to host the site and the person paying to host the site. Um, so yeah. And I really think the, the big thing that made 11D um, maybe novel or new is that it's really about just taking data from a bunch of different sources and converting it into static files. Um, so I just took a bunch of logos from the headless CMS uh, site uh, on jamstack.org. Um, but really, it's just about converting this data into HTML. I know you can use 11 d to generate any kind of files that you want. You can do JSON files, whatever. But really, it's all about make, making these styles from data. And I think Matthew Phillips said it really good. Good, I come He said it's really just two us two constants, data sources and templates, and we really tried to simplify it down as much as possible to those two things. Uh, HTML is awesome. I love the data sources and templates. Uh, and the really the nice thing about having static files is that um, when you make a mistake. Um, which I'm sure, I'm sure no one in here does, you can just uh, do an oopsie daisy and hot swap the site with one button, specifically on Netlify, this is Netlify, but a bunch of other hosts also offer this capability, uh, just to allow you to roll back to a previous version very easily. Um, so the next sort of plugin that we developed for 11D was the serverless plugin. Um, and the reason this was useful originally um, because it allows you to um, generate pages on request, um, which is kind of a completely different thing because everything was before before was built done in the build. Um, so when the, the user visits a website, 
uh, it, it runs 11 d <laughs> programmatically and then returns the output on request, which is um, a little bit higher risk um, and a little bit slower, of course, um, because the build is super fast. Um, and so you might be thinking, oh, uh, this serverless plugin, is it like a new thing that you're required to use in 11D? No, it's not a serverless first framework. It's not a serverless first tool. Um, we're still static first, everything's static from, from the beginning. Um, but specifically, you could run 11D in, in a Netlify function on every request, or you could use uh, what Netlify is calling an on-demand builder, which it runs once and then saves that content for subsequent subsequent requests in on the CDN. So you visit a site, when the first user visits the site after your build finishes, that's when the uh, content is generated. And then it feels like a build time request in terms of performance uh, when the next visitor comes. And you can check out demos of 11D serverless. We have, so we have a demo set up and you can kind of see um, th the three different rendering modes that 11D had when the serverless, serverless plugin came out. You could render uh, a template at build time uh, and you could see the date rendered there and it would only show the build time date that came back. Or you could do it on first request, request only, the on-demand builder. Um, and you'd see in the demo, in the live demo, that the new date would only represent uh, the time of the very first request that came in after the build was run. Uh, and then you could run it on every request, which basically runs 11D every time somebody hits the site and returns the content. And that would that would just give you date showing up in the in the browser every time. So we kind of had these three rendering modes, right? And Stephanie built a great demo around this um, using 11D serverless. It's object fit focal point. So you feed in an image and it would feed back the focal point, focal point of the end. And the CSS you could use uh, on your site to focus on that focal point. Um, really great demo, really like it. Uh, and it kind of showed how to use form inputs inside of the serverless plugin to generate a dynamic site. Or excuse me, external inputs, not necessarily, necessarily form it, because you're just feeding it a, a, a remote image URL. Um, and I also built this demo called Unicode, which basically you just go in and click these buttons and it makes a Unicode range for you. And it saves all of the um, selections that you made inside of the path. So you could click around on this and it would highlight the ones that you've selected. And then it would just feed you back a Unicode range. And you can kind of make a dynamic app using no client-side JavaScript with this because we're saving the entire state of the application in the URL. Um, ben Myers made a, a great demo with 11D serverless called um, Contrast 11Ds. I don't know if he had a real name for it, but um, it's this great color contrast checker uh, with just two form inputs, form color inputs, um, and then it generates a dy dynamic site that shows those colors and the contrast ratio for accessibility checking. And to me, this really showed the uh, how you would use 11D serverless to process form input, something that you couldn't previously do with the build time template uh, without requiring some form of JavaScript. Um, and the great thing here is that you don't need any client-side JavaScript to generate these dynamic content sites. So now we have this third plugin that's coming out uh, that uh, supplements the other two uh, in really kind of a unique and new way. Um, and it's called 11D Edge. So this allows you to run dynamic code on an Edge server. So um, it's much faster than the previous serverless rendering mode that we had before. Um, but the overlap isn't one-to-one. -one. Um, it's not going to completely replace serverless. It will replace some use cases of serverless, um, but it will not completely re replace the serverless plugin. And I'm going to go through um, a few demos of, of, of how that works. So if you are like up on the JavaScript framework world, um, you might note that some newer frameworks that are coming out are saying that they're edge first. Uh, we run everything on the edge. We really want you to use the edge. Um, and I do not want that for 11D. I do not want 11D to be an edge first framework. 
uh, I want edge and serverless to supplement the build. Um, and really, I, I think that 11D till the day 11D dies will be static first, build first, um, and focusing on that main, main use case, keeping everything super fast and portable. So edge functions are fast. They can be personalized to the individual um, user that visits the site, but they are not cached at all. Um, they're completely unique to the individual user. And here's what you here's what the uh, code is like to add uh, 11D Edge to your existing 11D site. You will need to install the new 2.0 Canaries to use this, um, but it's it might feel a little bit similar to the previous ser serverless plug we've had. You add a few lines of configuration to your configuration file. Um, you add a Edge function declaration in your Netlify Toml, and that sort of tells um, the server, what routes we want to run through, what pages we want to run through the, the edge uh, uh, function. Uh, and in this example, I'm just using slash star, which is every page on the site, basically. But you can make that more granular if you want. And then to use 11D edge inside of your templates, the really the only thing you need to do, and you can use this on any template that you have on your project, uh, is to use this edge, edge short. Um, now it does require uh, an async friendly template language to do this. So that means right now it's just liquid, um, nunjux and 110.js files can use this. Um, and then the content inside of it can be um, um, also liquid, uh, nunjux, markdown and 110.js. Well, actually you can't do 110.js inside, but there are all the limitations are documented on the plugin. Um, and so the content inside of the short code is really template syntax that runs on the edge server. Um, so when the edge server gets a request, it looks for these short codes and renders it on the edge, um, which really allows you to do some really cool things. Um, you can have access to query parameters. You can have access to HTTP headers like cookies. You can process forms. You can, you can do a whole different things. Um, and I encourage you to check out our demo site that we have for this. Um, I have a really, uh, a couple of really cool demos out there that I think will sort of uh, communicate better what sort of power you can unlock with this new plugin. Um, um, the easy, easiest one to understand is this dark mode toggle. Um, so previously with the, with the dark mode toggle, if you wanted to use, um, dark light and have a system preference, like a system default, um, you would need some form of client, client side script to implement that um, because you, the, the style sheet needs to know um, what the user preference is and you, that user preference needs to be saved somewhere. So I'm overriding my system default. I want a dark mode or I want a light mode. Um, I need to tell my, tell my style sheet is that in some way. Um, and so the only thing this does is using an edge function is it saves that preference as a cookie. And then when you go to render your HTML down there, um, it just adds a class to the HTML um, element uh, with that cookie value escaped, obviously. You don't wanna, you always wanna escape user input, uh, unsafe input. Um, and that just, I use that class in the, inside my style sheet to control the themes. Um, so really the only JavaScript on this page is an auto submit uh, web component that the only thing it does is that will submit this form to the server whenever you change the radio. Um, so yeah, it's really, I think a really good example of a, a way to uh, delegate to user preferences without requiring any client side JavaScript to do that. And so it's, it's, getting a little bit complicated, right? Because there's all these <laughs> different modes that you can run your comp your content and run your project in. Um, so how do we pick which one we want to use? Um, so if you're if you're looking for performance, and this is again goes back to 11D's core principles of uh, build first, static first, um, your build time templates are the best starting point. Um, use 11D how it was originally um, intended to be used and generate static files. 
if your project is getting very large and you want to move uh, a portion of your pages into an on-demand builder or serverless mode, you can do that. And it takes it out of your build to save you some build minutes if you want. Um, and you can use on-demand builders just to do that. And the subsequent visits will be cached and very, very speedy. And then the edge templates are also quite speedy as well because there's a 50 millisecond maximum execution time on those. Um, so yeah, I mean, edge is great. Edge is, is um, you, you are paying per request for those and I'll go through some of those other limitations as well. So Netlify has a free tier where they'll give you 300 minutes per month um, for build cost if you're running your things through build. Serverless uh, mode has you get 125,000 invocations, so um, yeah, requests basically uh, per site per month. And then if you run things through on-demand builders, um, the cash requests don't count towards that quota. And then with this new edge functions, you get 3 million uh, edge requests per month as well. Now remember that these aren't, these aren't cached, it's basically every, every hit you get to your site. Um, but really the, the, uh, feature set that you have access to is really the dividing, um, dividing line between which mode you want to use, right? Uh, if you use a build timer, uh, build time template, you don't get access to any HTTP headers, any cookies, any form, uh, processing, um, you don't have access to any of the query parameters, um, and if you use a serverless template, you do have access to that unless, unless you use a man builder because those are cached and uh, basically not unique to the individual requests that come in. Uh, so the, the real cool thing that this is unlocking here is that you can use edge with both serverless mode and build mode. You can mix and match those two get together. Um, so you can have access to headers, cookies, forms, URL search parameters inside of on-demand builders. If you put your edge handler, um, if you use an edge handler in combination with that. So I just wanna walk through a very, very quick study uh, on the 11D documentation. So if you go out to the 11D documentation, this is what it looks like right now. Um, but I won't, let's take you on a little bit of a time machine. Uh, we have some old versions of the 11D documentation out there. Um, so you can access previous uh, version history of the, of the 11D if you're using an older version. Uh, and so if you go out to the version 0.12 docs, this is what it looks like. Uh, and inside the build deploy logs for this, you can kind of see that um, we have about 500 pages that build on this page, on this site. Uh, and that's cool. The build takes the build took uh, around 54 seconds. And the reason for that is that we have these 11 d authors pages. So every single person that puts their site uh, in the 11 d showcase and on the 11 d leaderboards gets an author page. And each author has an individual te template that's generated by this build. Um, and so we have a lot of authors there. You can kind of see that this version has 390 unique authors on this page. Um, and we restructured all those author pages to be on-demand builders a while back. And you can kind of see the result of that. Uh, the current uh, deploy logs that we have for the production site now, there's only 145 uh, unique templates being generated here. And it's quite a bit faster. It's saved about 25 seconds on the Netlify build. And this is what the author's page looks like now. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, over 527. I mean, over 526, because it's 527. Anyway, um, yep, so there's a lot of different pages out there. Uh, and each one, each unique author has a, a, a page, but those are all generated in on-demand builders. So we, so we use serve mode to speed up our build um, and also save us some save build minutes. But also, those pages aren't generated if no one ever visits them. <laughs> um, so if there's a long tail of, of authors that maybe don't get any hits, then those requests are never, <laughs> they're never built, they're never generated. Um, so it's just a different way to do things. Now, the, the thing that I would like to add moving forward to the 11D documentation is that we have these contributor accounts. So if you're a 
supporter on Open Collective. Uh, we give you access to on-site search and a few other features. Um, and then we, I think maybe most popularly, people love to see the their avatar and the little balloon in the top right. Um, and um, yeah, don't cancel me, but um, this is actually inserted with client-side JavaScript. <laughs> um, so yeah, not great. So, I mean, it would be, I think it would be really cool to generate this avatar uh, in an edge function. Uh, and it would be quite easy to do that because all we need to do is store the avatar URL in a cookie and then apply that in an edge function. Maybe I'll get to that this afternoon. And so I don't expect you to, to know all of these, this giant table that I made, but you can take a screenshot if you want it for later. Or I'll put these slides up on, on my website too. Um, so you can kind of see the different uh, modes that we have for 11D templates and how to use this. So really for any specific project, you can mix and match build serverless and edge together. But more importantly, for any route or page on your site, you can actually mix and match build uh, serverless and edge together. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can use any, any one of these features in combination with the others, um, and they should work great to solve a bunch of these, these new and different dynamic use cases. Um, and I think, yeah, edge functions will replace a lot of what people were using serverless for, um, but they also work together great as well. 